Um, Angelique and Alita are both going to put in 250 hours of sweat equity, make a down payment on their homes, and take on the responsibility of home ownership. In, in exchange, Habitat is going to gather the resources to make building this home possible. We are really grateful for our many partners moving this forward, and I there's really too many people to thank, but I'm going to try and just quickly name a few of the people uh, who I just would be remiss not to mention. The City of East Hampton and Mayor will speak later. Pioneer Valley Photovoltaics who are donating a, the solar electric arrays for this house. They're a worker-owned cooperative based in Greenfield. The passive solar architectural design for the building was done by Edie Ambrose and Rachel Stevens. The Center for Eco-Technology is donating one of the two home energy ratings for the project and providing technical support so that we can get grants through Mass Saves new construction program. And over the last year, the other significant donations that have created the solid funding base for this project, a $59,000 grant from the Federal Home Loan Bank of Boston, $10,000 home sponsorship from East Hampton Savings Bank, thank you, 5,000 from the Zarek Foundation, 4,000 from Bike and Build, a uh, nonprofit group that bikes and <coughs> promotes affordable housing, and ongoing training from our local Lowe's store in Hadley for the women who are coming out to this construction site. In it, there, there's all these funders, but I also want to mention our staff. We have a very small but mighty staff. Thank you, Amy <laughs> and Janet, for all that you do and our skilled volunteers. We have a tremendous amount of volunteer labor going into this project. We, our project leadership team of Libby McClarty from our board of directors, Lynn Badgett from Wright Builders, Chuck Whittam, a wonderful retired architect, and Edie Ambrose, a local contractor, have really put in countless hours into this project. That them, along with the expertise of our design team, Rachel Stevens, Michael Broad. We really couldn't have done this without you. And if you'll notice, uh, just last week, there, were no, there was no roof over here. Just this morning, we had skilled volunteers and a crane putting the roof trusses on that unit over there and began the work of sheathing. So I want to say thank you to Jeff DeFeo, this, um, Jamie Martula, a carpenter from Integrity Development and Construction on loan today, Leah Supernaut, Fred Purley, Megan Stone. It's all these wonderful volunteers that really make the work happen. So, all right, that was my long-winded attempt to try and get some thank yous in here, but I am very pleased to introduce Meg Lusardi, the Commissioner for the Department of Energy Resources. She has been with the Department of Energy Resources since July 2014 and previously served as the Director and Deputy Director of DOER's Green Communities Division for three years. In that role, she developed the Green Communities Designation and Grant Program, which now boasts 123 cities and towns that have earned the designation <coughs> as Green Communities. Those municipalities are home to 48% of the Commonwealth population, so this is a significant things you've done before you in your time here so thank you so much thank you very much Megan <laughs> this is a really exciting day for advanced energy efficiency here in the Commonwealth as the secretary is going to announce here in a few minutes the Patrick administration's commitment to zero net energy buildings or ZNEB goes back to the governor's task force which set the course for advancing ZNEBs in its report, Getting to Zero. Since then, the DOER has been working with a ZNEB advisory group on fulfilling many of the 44 policy recommendations in that report to create a framework for ZNEB construction and renovation across the commercial, residential, and public sectors. The announcement of the Pathways to Zero Net Awards today is the newest example of the Commonwealth's adoption of high performance buildings in public buildings and now commercial and residential buildings too. And we are particularly pleased to make this announcement at this project site. You know, Megan went through all of the different uh, contributions to this project, the public and private partnerships that are contributing to this project, because this is going to be the most efficiently constructed 
out of all of our funded projects in terms of dollars per square foot. Supporting advanced energy efficiency in buildings is another example of Massachusetts not resting on its laurels in promoting a clean energy co economy here in the Commonwealth. So now it gives me great pleasure to introduce Secretary Maeve Vallely Bartlett. Um, prior to becoming our Secretary, Maeve served as the Undersecretary for the Environment as well as the Director of MEPA and she has a long-standing commitment to the Commonwealth and a clean energy and, and the environment and we are lucky to have her continuing that tradition as our Secretary. Thank you everyone. I will be very brief. It is so great to be out here uh, celebrating this wonderful project uh, that will be a zero net energy project. It's great. Governor Patrick, when he took office, one of the first things he did was he combined the energy office with the environment office, thereby promoting and putting forward his policies that are both good for the environment good for our clean energy future, and good for the economy. We have grown the clean energy sector. Uh, right now, there are almost uh, 70,000 people working in the clean energy sector. We're hoping to get to the 100,000 mark by the end of the year, and we are just going great guns. These are our jobs and programs uh, that promote the clean energy economy. And one of the most important ways for us to do that is to maximize energy efficiency. Massachusetts has been ranked number one in the nation for energy efficiency programs uh, four years in a row. That is a great testament to the good work that uh, Meg and her team do at DOER, and I would be remiss if I didn't uh, mention Tina Halfpenny, who is the <laughs> director of our energy efficiency programs. And by uh, by promoting energy efficiency, we're reducing our need to depend on the older fuel systems and the older um, uh, ways of getting our energy. And this building and this project being a zero net energy building is just the perfect way to us con to continue that momentum that we have here in Massachusetts. Today we're announcing 2.95 million, I like to call that $3 million, <laughs> in uh, programs across the Commonwealth, 25 very important programs uh, that range, again, across the Commonwealth that will get people to the zero net energy that we're constantly pushing and constantly promoting. And probably one of the most important things about all of these programs, and as it shows, to, to the communities and to the greater network of folks that this can be done. It's not some future uh, ideal that we need to reach for. It is today and it's happening today in Massachusetts and it's happening today in East Hampton. And I just wanna uh, congratulate everyone who's been working on this project and all the others throughout the Commonwealth. Um, next, I have the honor of introducing Mayor Karen Cadger um, of East Hampton, who began her service with the City of East Hampton, one of our 123 green communities, um, over 20 years ago. Her career began as the assistant to the town administrator until the town became a city, and she became the first mayoral assistant. Serving over 17 years in this position, she not only assisted the first mayor, but numerous other departments within the municipality. And on January 2nd, the mayor began her term as the first female mayor for the city of East Hampton. So with that, welcome Karen. Well, first of all, this is a very, very exciting day, and I can't thank you all enough, and it's great to see everybody here. And I was going to mention that East Hampton is a green community, <laughs> and we have taken we have taken advantage of the many many energy efficiency grants funded. So I'm very excited to hear your news. And I thought, uh, being here today, um, this is a, to me a perfect example of a partnership, a partnership with the state, with the city, with volunteers, with uh, families, and. Um, I thought maybe you might want a, a, a little bit of a history on how this all became into place. I, I think as most of you know, this is not an overnight thing. They don't just <laughs> pop up and start building the house today. 
So uh, back in 2008, uh, the city used CPA funds, community preservation funds, about 250,000 to, uh, excuse me, 150,000 to buy 14 acres of um, preserved land. One of those acres is for, is for habitat. So those were, those were our city CPA funds that we used to do this. And uh, that happened in 2008. In 2010, um, our housing par partnership, and I see two members here, Jim and Kathy, thank you. Um, we sent out through the mayor's office and the housing partnership uh, RFPs for people to you know, send in requests for proposals for this property. And we're thrilled to have awarded the project to Habitat for Humanity. Um, this project is very near and dear to my heart. Um, it's actually the first, again with the women, first women's build project that I've ever been involved in. And I would not have been involved in this if it wasn't a women's build project. I think, um, I think a lot of people, I, I've been wanting to get involved in Habitat for Humanity for many, many years, but it was the women's build out that attracted me because sometimes people feel intimidated. They don't know how to do all these different um, things with mechanical and building. So I actually volunteer here, not enough. I've only been, I've probably only spent about four days here. And any chance I get, I come here. Um, number one, because I love it. And number two, to learn. I'm actually learning a lot of things here. And um, so it, it, it actually was not till 2011 when our city council ended up voting um, to actually approve this land transfer. So I couldn't be happier here. Um, I, and just so people know the criteria involved, to be able to, you know, and it's great meeting you, as mm -hmm. I mentioned before, um, and both of you, it's been a pleasure. But the criteria involved to get to this point, to be chosen, is so strict that I believe out of, I, 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 I was probably, Megan will probably mm -hmm. tell me, it's probably almost a year of applications and going through them, only four families made it to that criteria. So it's very strict. Um, congratulations to both of you, and I look forward to seeing you here, and I couldn't be happier. Next, we're going to get to hear from John Child from PV Squared. Um, John is the design and sales team manager at PV Squared, and PV Squared has installed solar electric systems for hundreds of clients throughout the Commonwealth, and is donating $40,000 worth of equipment design expertise and labor to install the PV systems for these homes here today. So, John. I'll also mention Andy, who's somewhere out here, my colleague. So, um, we are a worker-owned cooperative based in Greenfield. We've been working throughout this region <coughs> since 2002. And we first got involved with Habitat in 2010 and that was in Amherst working on a series of habitat homes there. When we were working on the habitat projects in Amherst, the funding was different. So DOER in the state, there's a lot of excellent programs, but the money moves around and certain things get emphasized and de-emphasized over time. And as we were watching some of those early support dollars fade, um, I sat with MJ Adams at the time <coughs> and said, please, when the rebate money goes away, don't stop, because it costs a lot of money to live in a house, and solar electric systems can change that, and we know that. We, we live in homes as well that have solar electric systems and experience that benefit directly. So um, we asked MJ at that time to please come back to the table, invite us, see what we can do. We'd like to help. It's really important for our company, our cooperative, to try to maintain a role in these projects. So we transitioned from sort of you know, doing partner to a figure. Forty thousand dollars a lot of money. I'm not gonna say that it isn't. It's a huge deal for us to do that. Um, but we all feel very strongly as a group to keep that up. This is a bigger project than we've been involved in in the past because the goal's net zero. And also a big deal to move into a house that is so efficient that there might not be a utility bill at all. So that's great. So for us what we do, we really care about helping Habitat. It's a great organization to be involved with. And the idea that we can come and make a, a difference not only on the first day, but for decades. This is a gift that keeps on giving. That's, that's a big deal for us. So thank you for this beautiful day.
Okay, next we're going to get to hear from each of our homeowners. Yeah. Um, both women have shown a great commitment to their country through their military service. As Megan mentioned, they had to go through a rigorous process to be selected for these homes, and they're also going to be contributing several hundreds of hours of sweat equity to their projects. Um, and as John mentioned, um, each of their homes will have little to no utility expenses as a result of the zero net energy features um, of these homes here today that uh, we are celebrating. So first I will introduce Angelique Baker, who is a U.S. Navy veteran and will be moving into this home with her children, Serenity, Blaze, and Cutler. Angelique. everyone, I just wanted to thank you for coming, and if I haven't met you, if you come up and introduce yourself. Um, what I first told Megan about about this uh, home is that there's, there's a show called Extreme Makeover, and you have a yucky <laughs> home, and yeah, they go away on vacation, and they come back, and they have this great home, and like that's what it feels like to me. Uh, it feels like a, a mansion. It feel, it's it's going to be brand new, um, and I know they keep reminding me that it's simple and decent, um, but there's nothing simple about putting this house together. Like, uh, I, I came here yesterday and spent four hours and, uh, you know, the amount of work that went in and people could have quit and walked off. Nothing was holding them here when they were having a hard time. And that, that means a lot to me. Like, I am disabled. I volunteer a lot. And people ask me why. They're like, what are you doing? You don't get paid. And I, I don't know. I just like to volunteer. And so... Now I know what's going on. Like the world is paying me back for everything that I did. Like this is really touching for me. I don't, I, I know a handful of you. Um, I, it, it's an unbelievable feeling. I want, I would like everybody's name in a little frame. I know that you put it on inside my house. Um, and to me, you know, I might go on a limb on saying this, but I'm gonna say it. So um, I've experienced a lot of domestic violence and it really takes you and it, and it smushes you down and you don't know if you're going to get, get back up. And to me, this house is like, it, it's just this like rise against a lot of things that happened. It was a goal of mine that people said that I wasn't going to make because I was low income and I was like, I'm going to find a way, you, you watch. Um, and, and to me, this house is like four, like everybody, that, every woman that I've met that's been knocked down, it's just such a, such a big deal to me. And I was sitting over here crying and so, um, <laughs> I'm crying, I'm okay, I'm happy. <laughs> so, I, um, so thank you again for coming out and, uh, and, and, and I don't know, just thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> We also have Alita Kennedy, who is also a U.S. Hi. Navy veteran, and she will be moving into her home with her grandson Isaac. I know it doesn't work too well to say. <laughs> Everything she just said, plus. <laughs> well, Isaac and I live in an apartment building that has had a problem with drainage since it was built back in the 70s. And consequently, we have this thriving community of, of mold in our walls. It's been that way forever, and a lot of them are toxic. It's been making us ill. We've been there for 10 years. It's been making us ill more and more on a gradual basis. And I've been trying to find a place for us to live. And I haven't been able to get very far because my debt to income ratio there's nothing anybody will look at me for. You know, they, they won't even talk about it. We've tried renting, we've tried buying, we've tried different programs. Don't even make enough for the affordable housing programs. And uh, all the uh, subsidized things are waiting lists. I'm on all those waiting lists. Yeah. So we applied for this. Never dreamed this would happen. And it's actually, it's an answer to our prayers. In my mind, it is literally saving our lives. It's not just a matter of being comfy and happy and pride, pride of home ownership. There's all that too. But this is safety and security and knowing we're not going to get sicker and sicker as time goes on. And it's the most amazing project I've ever seen in my life. It's like so many people donating all these different services and materials. And 
it's a very clever program the way it's designed. All the different hurdles you encounter trying to buy a home, it, it accommodates all those things in a way that they work with you so that you can handle this and you can afford this. But, um, plus it's a green home, you know, in a beautiful spot, the foot of a mountain with hawks looking for their dinner every night, you know, it's amazing. And uh, I'm just really, really thrilled and very grateful and appreciative of everybody's help and everybody's contributions. And I know it's all done out of love just for humanity, just because. And I really deeply appreciate all that. I want to thank you. Before we close up today, I want to recognize a few people here. We have um, members of our Zeneb advisory group who have worked with us on implementing the policies and programs to get us to zero net energy buildings in the Commonwealth. So we have Jennifer Marapizzi here today. Um, and we also have Carter Scott here, so thank you. I also want to recognize we have other award winners here today. So please, um, you know, wave your hand whenever I call your name. So we have um, and both public and private uh, award winners. So we have Clark University. All right. Um, the Hitchcock Center. All right. Um, Transformations. All right. Um, Bristol Community College. All right. And all in Moscow. All right. Is there anybody I missed that is uh, also here today? Yeah. Oh, and pay yet. That's right. I apologize. <laughs> I had you down there as well. All right. I also want to recognize Alex Pollard and Spencer Lawrence, our uh, program coordinators at the uh, DOER, who really, you know, put this program together and helped implement it. And you'll, all of our award winners will be hearing more from them, and they work under Team Half Penny's leadership. So, thank you very much. And I just want to thank you all for being here today, particularly Angelique and Alita. You know, thank you uh, for the great example that you have set for all of us and congratulations on your new homes. And I want to thank Megan for giving us this great project site here today. You know, a lot of people may not know that Megan also lives in her own zero net energy home. So uh, thank you for bringing us all here together today. And with that, um, I think there's just a few pictures we want to take. We want to get the award winners up first. Okay. okay. Yeah. All, right. all right. Thank you. Everybody. Oh, I'm sorry. I'll hold, I'll hold okay. it. Okay, all right. You have a photo of it. It's got to be all of it. Sure. Right, line the bars. You've got to put them up there. Okay, all right. Yeah. Yeah, sure. Come on in. I'm short. I should probably get everybody. I'm short. All right. I'm short and slow. What's me? I'm short. You're going to have to come in a little tighter. All right. Come on, come on, come on. How are you? Good to see you. Come on, move in. All right. Yeah, come on, Megan. Don't, don't pretend you're high. Come on in. This one, I don't know. I like all the lights. We don't have any iPhones there. <laughs> oh yeah, there are. Look over here. All right, so. You good? Good. Excellent. I'll just know that somebody just pointed out to me that I, you know, failed to specifically announce that having a living community itself is an actual award. You know, I didn't want to steal your thunder by announcing it myself. So that's what I want Thank you. We're very happy. Oh, I'm sure. I guess we can take it a bit longer.